Hi, this is Brian Nixon with uh, Sharpshooter. I'm here to shoot a video on the 22 Reloader. Um, we've done this video before. We're going to do some little bit better close-in shots, guys, and go through a few questions uh, on a few more details that we've got with uh, the priming compound, which you can check out in the link below. We did a separate video on that. Um, so with the 22 Reloader, we've got, um, everybody says it can't be done. We've done that. So step one is, and I'm going to answer a few questions here that um, have been asked to me through hundreds of emails. Um, one, the, the, ex the dent on the case, what do you do about that? You don't do anything. 70% um, of your 22s don't hit the case that hard. There's still area in there to get priming compound into that spot. And when you pack it in, you're still going to get it in that spot. It can still hit the exact same spot. It's still going to go bang. Life is good. The other 30%, that do pinch that case together, uh, you've got a 1 in 50, 1 in 70 chance of hitting that exact same spot because you've got priming compound here and here. You've only used up a couple degrees of 360. So your likelihood of hitting that very small, um, but you do not worry about the dip. That's question number one. So now we're going to reload here a little bit. Um, obviously we're using used cases. We've got our rim cleaner here. That You've got two sides to this. You've got the rim cleaner and the rim packer. So on the rim cleaner, that's your pointed side. We're going to hook that right into the rim of that case. One twist around. Tap it out. A little bit of stuff comes out of there. That's what you have to do. The rim of the case is clean. So now we're going to go to priming compound. Now this is where I get a lot of questions. Um, like I said, we shot one on our Primal. Go check the link below. You can also use the old school ways, the way they did it in 1900s, tips off striking rim matches, kids paper, snap caps. It works. Um, I'm not going to go into that because there's too many videos out there on it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to reprime the case. We've got our priming compound we mixed up here earlier. Got enough in there. Going to use our powder funnel here. Tap it down a little bit. There we go. And it's in there. Now what we're going to do is take our drop of acetone. We provide the all these products here. They're, all these things I'm showing you come in your kit. Um, the acetone does not, but the vessel is there to do it. Of course, I'd have to find one with some acetone on it. One drop of acetone right there in the case. Good to go. Now, I get this question all the time, my case isn't going off or I'm having a little bit of issues. There's only one problem that we have is humidity. If you're in a high humid climate, wait a couple minutes, then pack it to the rim. It'll dry. We have a hardening agent in there. It'll dry in the rim. You're good to go. Everybody after we've given them that suggestion, 100% success ratio. If you're in a drier climate like we here in Colorado, doesn't matter we're just going to pack it to the rim so what I do is you take the opposite end of this which is what we call a rim packer center of the case and I just roll that case in my hand and pack the rim that's plenty and uh, then you're done you're good to go set that off to the side let it dry and uh, once that's dry it takes, we, we say in our instructions 24 hours, and obviously we did that because of humidity. It really takes about 12 hours for that to dry. Once that's dry, hardened up, uh, you can look down there with a flashlight the first few times you do this, just to kind of see where your drying is. Um, and once you know that it's taken, you know, 12, 16, whatever hour it is for where you live, and like I said, it's all because of humidity, um, then you're good to go. You know how long it's going to take those cases to dry. Now we're going to do is we're going to use our powder dipper here. We're going to go to our instructions, which has we loading data in it. This is how your instructions look. It shows you old school ways, brass prep, uh, reloading data. But we're going to come right down here to this little chart, which is like the old lead chart. It just shows you off of this dipper and these powders right here, which we have obviously smokeless powders in there, how much this is going to give you. So you don't have to have a scale. So we're going to take... Uh, powder right here and I want to use a grain and a half of this 
So I'm going to go right here, PB, a uh, grain and a half. Obviously, I'm going to need uh, one large and two smalls. And uh, that's going to be my grain and a half. So these, this one here is dry. I know that from earlier. Uh, powder funnel right there. Got my small end and my large end. So we've got our powder in there. Now the biggest part of our 22 reloader is this right here. This is our bullet molds. Um, you're obviously pouring lead in here. Open it up. And we've got a 38 grain bullet mold, a 25, and then our crimping tool built in. Um, so I've already gone out and cast some bullets. I'm going to take one of these 38s grain bullets. Put it right in the case. Slides right in there. Stops at the heel. The heel bullet um, is a must with a 22 long rifle. That's the only heel bullet mold on the market. We're going to lay it right in here. Right to there. And that's in our crimping tool. I'm going to shut that right there. It's in there tight. Good to go. You're ready to shoot. Can't pull that. So there's your round. It's been reloaded. We primed it, we let that dry, we added the powder. I didn't show you the bullet casting part, we've done that in previous videos and you can see that anywhere on YouTube. Push the bullet in there, use the crimping tool, and there we've created a 22 long rifle. You can reload these for eight to $10 a brick and that's a brick of 500. Uh, you definitely can't buy them at that anymore. I'm gonna go back to our instructions here a little bit. I get these questions all the time. Do you guys have loading data? Absolutely. We've got everything from 550 feet per second all the way to 1720. It walks you through the entire process, casting bullets, crimping, down through the whole thing. And then on the back here, we've got a history of that rimfire. Well, rimfires have been loaded before because it has been done in history. Indians did it. They did it during the Depression. Um, it's been done before. So all the tools you need are right here in this kit and uh, all you need is a little bit of gunpowder a pound of powder you're going to be able to load 3,500 to 7,000 rounds with um, a little bit of lead that you can get wheel weights scrap yard go pick up old bullets and remelt them and shoot them again it's a recyclable product um, so that's what we wanted to show you guys uh, really appreciate you coming out here today and checking this video out go check us out on Facebook Instagram and uh, YouTube, look at some of the links below for the other videos and thank you for watching.